All right, let's move past the Cincinnati game and look ahead to a game this weekend because you might have heard Pitt's got a pretty big deal on Saturday night. It's not just any game. It's a backyard brawl. It's a trip to Morgantown to face West Virginia in Morgantown for the first time since, what, 2011? It's been a long time. It's been a dozen years, and Pitt is headed back to the backyard brawl on the road. So let's get ready for that game with an inside look at the West Virginia Mountaineers with our good friend Keenan Cummings from WVSports.com. That's what we're going to do today on The Morning Pit, youtube.com slash panthalair.com. All right, it's Thursday. It's The Morning Pit here on youtube.com slash panthalair.com. excited about this one. We, I mean, we have a lot of stuff to say about the Cincinnati game. We've been talking about it all week. We're going to keep talking about it. We're going to keep talking about the issues and Phil Dracovic and all that stuff. But look, it's a backyard brawl in like two days. All right, it's coming up real fast. And depending on when you watch this video, it might be 48 hours away. It might be less. It's time to, I mean, at least for today, we're going to shift the focus to that game and get an inside look at West Virginia. I'm pretty excited about it, but of course, I'd also be really excited if you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash PantheLairCom is where we do all of our video content here. We have our daily morning pit videos like we're doing right now. We do it Monday through Friday. We have our weekly live show like we did last night. Me and Jim Hammett get together, talk a little pit sports. We have our post-game show, which is always a lively an entertaining experience and usually a good time i'm thinking we're gonna have our post game show on saturday night probably around 11 or so it's not gonna be like last week when we started at like 12 15 um this is a road game i'll be watching from the panther lair uh, offices here in uh southwestern pennsylvania and then um shortly after the game ends once we get a chance to collect our thoughts and whatnot we'll go live and we'll have a post game show right here at youtube.com slash panther um tentative start time 11 o'clock we'll see what time we actually get going but i'll keep you posted on that with uh social media and on the message boards and whatnot but you don't want to miss it so make sure you like this video and subscribe youtube.com slash pantherlair.com and then of course head over to the website panther-lair.com pittsburgh.rivals.com where you can get all your pit sports coverage football basketball recruiting it's all right there pantherlair.com and message boards to interact with hundreds and thousands of other pit fans a lot of good stuff there um, a lot of content, a lot of things for you to read, a lot of things for you to digest and interact and you know make contact about panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com. So you stay up on all the Pitt sports news. Now, of course, our good friends at wvsports.com, that's the West Virginia Rivals site. They've been at it for a long time and uh, covering West Virginia and doing it as well as anyone, if not better. And so I said, look, guys, we got to get together and talk about this game. Let's have a little bit of insight and info when it comes to uh, the Mountaineers. And so we called up my good friend, Keenan Cummings. I forgot to ask him if his middle name was Ivory because it'd be awesome if his name was Keenan Ivory Cummings. I'm guessing it's not. But whatever his middle name is, Keenan knows West Virginia inside and out. He's got a lot of interesting insight and info on the Mountaineers. And so I said, come hang out. Let's do a morning pit episode and get a little bit of uh, an inside look at West Virginia. So here's our friend from WVSports.com to talk about West Virginia, the Mountaineers, the football program, what to watch out for on Saturday. He's Keenan Cummings. All right, Keenan, I appreciate you joining me, man. It's uh, it's fun uh, to do these sort of backyard ball ba- backyard brawl previews and, and get ready for the game. I'm, I'm looking forward to it on uh, on Saturday. Of course, I, the first thing I wanted to ask you about was just from this game against Duquesne. Um, th- this walk-on receiver I'm reading about, right? Is it Hudson Clement? Is that yeah. his name? It, it, I mean, like, yeah, Hudson Clement. And so the story <laughs> is that he he catches 177 yards and three touchdowns and gets a scholarship right after the game. I mean, did it actually go down like that, or did they actually put him on scholarship like two weeks ago and just didn't tell anybody? Or I mean, that's a great story, right? It did go down like that, but it wasn't like he just went out there and they said, "Here, take a scholarship." Like he he has been a guy <laughs> that. The coaches had highlighted, you know, pretty much throughout the fall, you know, even in the spring, some he flashed a little bit even last year. You know, he's a fast kid. He's a West Virginia kid. And, uh, you know, he he joined some elite company. You know, I know that stats can be deceiving at times, but 175 yards and three touchdowns. It's only been done four times wow. in West Virginia history, four times. Hmm. So he joins Stebman Bailey, who did it twice, Tavon Austin, who did it once, and now Hudson, who is nicknamed Tudson Clement. <laughs> that's awesome I, so i mean you know we, we don't want to disparage our, our good friends the dukes but he did that against duquesne but is he is he a viable receiving option going forward or is that just uh hey you had that great game against duquesne good good for you 
I'm not expecting him to win the Bolitnikov by any means, but I, I do think he is going to play. Um, he's earned the right to see some snaps. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you see Devin Carter, who didn't play, which opened the door for him in that game. Uh, he will play against Pitt. So you might see him play a little bit of X instead of Z, you know, mix in. I think he's going to be part of a rotation. West Virginia right now is trying to figure out who is going to catch passes behind Devin Carter because there's a lot of guys, but not a lot of production. A lot of those guys are going to be healthy, though, for this pit game. They've been banged up, you know, throughout camp, and a lot of them really set out last week. So it'll be interesting to see how the rotation looks. I think that they'll have much more of a downfield passing element than really – be at more full strength than they've been at any point this season. That's what I was kind of curious about. I was looking at the box score from the Pitt West Virginia game last year, and I was looking at the box score from the West Virginia Penn State game this year, and like none of the guys who caught passes are named. There, I don't think there are any names that appear in both box scores under the receiving. Is it just complete turnover in that wide receiver room this year? Um, almost a hundred percent. It's actually insane, Chris. It's like I think it's eighty nine percent. Of the yards, eighty-seven percent of the uh, of the touchdowns. Uh, I mean, it was it's all gone. So they have some guys they really like. You know, I mentioned Devin Carter. They got him, they actually pulled him away from Penn State. He was mm-hmm. committed to Penn State, flipped to West Virginia, transferred from North Carolina State. Similar to Bryce Ford Wheaton and what they can do. You know, big, tall guy can run, um, make contested catches. They have a tight end they really like, uh, and Cole Taylor. Kind of, they've been looking for that tight end they can throw the ball to really since Neil's been here and it's been up and down, you know, last year, I think they had 153 yards total uh, out of the position over the course of, of a 12 game season. Uh, Cole Taylor already has 86 through two games. So <laughs> they're going to use him down the seam. They're going to get, get creative with him and they have a bunch of pass catchers that they like. It's just, can you do it in a game? And that's what I've been asking Neil about really dating back to the summer. You know, how do you feel about your receivers? And he kept saying, we have to do it in a game. So far, I would say they have not done it. Uh, Hudson Clement aside and, you know, what you expected out of Devin Carter, you need some of these guys like Cortez Braham. You know, they got a transfer from Marshall, EJ Horton, that can really run. He'll finally be healthy. Jaheim White plays running back but catches passes. You know, they're guys on the roster, Rodney Gallagher, Traylon Ray, but they've got to prove it. Right. You mentioned Gallagher. I, I saw he he caught a pass against Duquesne, right? Is he factoring in there? Is he in that rotation or is that, again, another – we're playing the FCS game. We're going to get 17 guys on the field. They're working him. They're trying to work him in, you know, he only played one snap against Penn state. Some of that was what personnel they use. They didn't use a lot of alert 11 personnel. So he's kind of a slot guy. Um, Almost had a touchdown in this game. You know, they gave him the ball on a, on a, on a, handoff type deal and he got to the end zone stretched it out and lost the fumble so a learning lesson you know his fcs games can present learning lessons but i do think as the season goes on both him and Traylon ray are going to have a big role as freshmen on this team tell me about garrett green as, as a passer when we asked pat narduzzi about him he was like yeah he's 511 he's athletic and they're talking about running and there's rpos and this kind of stuff but i mean what about just as a passer guy who's going to get the ball to these receivers whoever they may end up being how is he in that regard He's not JT Daniels in pretty much every sense of the word. Uh, when you're talking about a comparison for Pitt fans out there, um, very athletic guy you mentioned. You know, he's a guy that it seems like he throws the deep ball better than he does the layups sometimes. You know, it's where he struggles sometimes with the layups. Some of that is he's a ball of energy. You know, this guy is a leader. You know, he's the first guy to run down the sideline. He is, he's what you want in that regard as a quarterback, but sometimes that plays against him. He gets a little bit too amped up, misses on some easy throws doesn't trust his protection at time that comes with experience you know that's going to get better and better obviously you expect that to look better against Duquesne and it did over the opener Um, I would say he's a better passer than people expect but he's still developing in that area I don't think that he's a guy that you know they're just going to put out there and he's going to run the ball 40 times he's going to try to throw the football and he's thrown it pretty accurately this year his numbers are deceiving a little bit I know this has been a problem at West Virginia the past few years but They've had quite a few drops already from that receiver group I was talking about earlier. You know, last week, three touchdowns, I believe, were dropped that were placed right in the breadbasket. I had a couple other throws. I think it's like seven on the year already that that receivers have just dropped uh, on well-placed balls. So I think that some of that comes with experience, you know, a lot playing a lot of young guys at receivers, guys that hasn't seen a lot of time. But the encouraging thing from a West Virginia perspective is Garrett has not gotten down at all. In fact, handled the handle it you know guys dropping passes they should have caught he's the first one to go over and say we got it next time we got it next time and neil said he's handled it better than even the coaching staff 
and the coaching staff's pulling their hair out and he's over there saying, we got this, no problem. We got this. And, and that's really what you want to see out of a younger quarterback. CJ Donaldson kind of, I don't know, for, for those of us uh, in, in Pittsburgh, he seemed to come out of nowhere in that game last year, seven carries for 125 yards. I think he ended up having 300 yard games last year. I'm looking at his stats from Penn state game, you know, 18 for 81 and a touchdown. It's, it's pretty good in a game where, you know, the, the score is a little bit lopsided there. Um, he's not a surprise anymore. Uh, you know, at, how is he as a, as a, you know, an every down back Pitt is certainly going to have their eyes on him. I think he caught them off guard last year. Um, but now that he's not a surprise to anyone, is he, how's he doing carrying the load? I think he's doing well, but you know, this is a team that West Virginia wants to use a lot of running backs. They're, they're deep there. If they're deep anywhere, it's offensive line and running back. Uh, CJ is going to probably get the most touches, but I would not call this, uh, you know, it's his backfield to say, you know, that they want to play Justin Johnson. You know, they want to play Jalen Anderson, Jaheim White. Uh, all those guys are going to touch the ball. I think the thing that you've really liked to see out of Donaldson, he's gotten a lot better in pass protection. I think if he was impressed there last year, I mean, in that pit game, there was an instance that really stood out to me. He just stonewalled number seven, the linebacker there that come through. And I didn't expect that <laughs> from, from a tight end playing running back, but, uh, right. He's he's gotten better there too. He's gotten better at learning how to, and this seems kind of weird for people that don't, you know, necessarily know the intricacies, but he's learned how to fall as a running back, you know, protect his body. He's he played tight end. The guy never played running back his entire career until last last fall camp. So he had to learn some of those things. And I think it's it's worked for him. He's trying to be patient, sometimes a little too patient early in the season. But he's a load. Uh, he's a load to bring down. And I think West Virginia wants to rely on that run game and uh everything they have there. The other side of the ball, then Keenan, you know, there's not always a lot you can take out of an FCS game. I mean, if there is something there, you know, by all means. But what what did you see from West Virginia's defense against Penn State? Where where are the where are the strengths? Where are the weaknesses and the the vulnerabilities? The front seven has played very well. It would be hard to be disappointed with the front seven through the first two games. Um, they played very well against the run. You know, even Penn State with their two backs, they have that they they really kept them in check for most of the game. I think they only had one or two runs over 10 yards. So they they did they controlled there. But the problem is the secondary has been uh a little iffy to say the least. Um they have allowed some free runners. Some of that is what some teams did to them. You know, Penn State especially, you know, they did a lot of kind of pick plays and uh crossing patterns and and way to free up their guys and West Virginia kind of got caught in no man's land but there's been guys running free it even happened last week some especially when Duquesne was able to break contain a little bit you know the quarterback kept his eyes down the field and found some guys open that can't happen against Pittsburgh you know Neil pretty much said I mean without without saying it you know they've already put some stuff in to stop that they didn't show it against Duquesne on purpose obviously because what was coming right. up i think that's pretty much the gamesmanship that all college coaches play mm -hmm. so we'll see if it works um they did play much better in the second half against duquesne at well i'll call it the second half but after the two hour lightning delay <laughs> uh, in the second quarter they did play much better um there wasn't as much of that but that's going to be you know west virginia's got to be able to a throw the ball on offense and b stop teams from getting wide open receivers on defense if not it's going to be a long year we we can all make assumptions from like the Pittsburgh perspective about this, but I, I'm curious about the West Virginia perspective. How much does this game weigh on Neil Brown's future, either securing it or or, or sealing it, um, you know, one way or the other, or is it just it's just I mean, it's obviously not just a non-conference game. It's not just a non-conference game for either side here, uh, but you know, those questions just sort of exist out there. You know, how, how much do you think this game could either you know sort of cement him if he can if he if, if he wins or maybe further doom his fate if if he loses now are we talking from an administrative perspective or a fan base perspective well the fans i mean the fans are going to you know cheer if they win and boo if they lose i mean i i'm talking about like how yeah uh, you know and and if the fan perspective affects the administrative perspective then fine then we consider that but i'm, I'm thinking more about the people who actually will make the decisions here I don't think it make or makes or breaks him in, in their eyes. I mean, I think that there's still a lot of opportunities for West Virginia to exceed expectations. I think Neil's got to get six or seven wins, mm -hmm. you know, and that doesn't seem like that's not a bar West Virginia wants to hit. You know, fan base, the fan base is not going to be excited about that. But looking at it realistically, this was a team that was lost a lot, you know, was picked to, at the bottom, dead last in the Big 12. I think they're better than that. I think a lot of preseason polls anymore really are 
kind of pointless because all the turnover on rosters, right. it's hard enough to know your own roster, more or less everyone else in the league. So I think some of that's just what it is. But this is a game that Neil needs to win uh, for the fan base. I just I can't even tell you how much. You know, this is a game that fans can't help but think they let last year get away. You know, they had Pitt fourth down. I, you know, they need six inches to get the, get a first down. And they were up seven. They decided to punt the ball. And then, of course, the turnover. Uh, this is at home. It should be probably one of the biggest, I would say, probably the best environment West Virginia's had in at least seven, eight, nine years um, with just, you know, the pit rivalry and night game in Morgantown. It's going to be crazy. I fully expect it to be everything it's built to be. Pretty much what it was last year in Pittsburgh. I expect a lot of fans but in, on both sides to get crazy. And really, Chris, I'm just glad we're talking about this game every year again. Yeah, right. I can't, exactly. I mean, it, it takes me back to when I first started here on the Rivals Beat. You know, me and you were doing this every year, but mm -hmm. it's sad that games like this have gone to the wayside, really. It's just so much fun. If you're at the games, you can see it. You know, this it means more to the fans, whether they want to admit it or not. Oh, yeah. And, and, and I think Pitt fans are, I mean, it, there's always this weird thing where like Penn State fans tell Pitt fans that they don't care and Pitt fans tell West Virginia fans that they don't care. But all three of them care a whole lot, you know, and more than they're more than they're willing to admit. Like, I mean, Penn State fans won't admit it, but yeah, they loved when Pitt had, and Penn State had a four game series. Pitt fans may or may not admit it, but they love this series. I mean, the environment last year, obviously it was, you know, extra juiced for Pitt fans because they won the game and the way they won it. But like that environment was outstanding start to finish. The environment on Saturday night is going to be great. And when it goes back, comes back up here next week or next year, it's going to be outstanding again. It is. It's, um, you know, and this is a, a tale as old as time. It's disappointing to see these kind of things go away, but I'm with you, man. I'm glad, I'm glad we've got it. It's been a lot of fun. It was fun last year. I think it's going to be fun this year and probably for uh, years to come. Hopefully they can get it on the schedule, but Keenan, thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. I guess we will uh, see you Saturday night in Morgantown for what uh, is sure to be a fun one. Yeah. Uh, thanks again, Chris. Appreciate it, man, as always. All right. Thanks Keenan for joining us today. It was a lot of fun to uh, chat with him. It is funny that, I mean, none of the guys who caught passes for West Virginia last year, caught passes for West Virginia last week. I, I mean, it's, it's just, it's a complete turnover at the receiver position. Obviously they have a new quarterback. They got CJ Donaldson coming back as the running back. And that's something to keep an eye on. He's not as much of a surprise or he won't be this year uh, as much of a surprise as he was last year. Like I said, and I pointed this out yesterday about my confidence about the defense. Um, you know, last year Donaldson went off seven carries for 125 yards in that season opener against Pitt, there were a lot of issues with Pitt's run fits and their run defense and their keys and communications and all those things that coaches like to talk about. And in week two, they held Tennessee to 91 rushing yards. Um, and Tennessee was a top 30 rushing offense last year. They averaged almost 200 rushing yards per game. They were a good rushing offense and Pitt cleaned it up and took care of business. So as you're looking at this week, after Pitt gave up, you know, 200 rushing yards to Cincinnati and they're facing a back who went off against them last year, I think they're going to clean those things up and, and take care of business. Different personnel, new players on both sides of the ball. Um, but I think they'll get things cleaned up heading into this week and, and defend the run, stop the run better. But I thought that was a lot of interesting insight from uh, Keenan Cummings there. We appreciate him. Uh, joining the uh, join, joining the morning pit today. If you want to read more about West Virginia, go check out wvsports.com or westvirginia.rivals.com. It's their uh, rival site down there, and those guys do a great job. We've had a we've had a lot of fun back and forth over the years with those guys. I mean, dating back to like the mid two thousands and Dave Wan said Rich Rodriguez era. So we've known those guys a long time, and they're they're good guys. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's fun to fun to chat with Keenan. We'll have to do that again next year for uh, next year's edition of the brawl thank you for tuning in today i appreciate it make sure you like this video and subscribe to our youtube channel so you don't miss any of our pit video content here on youtube and of course uh go to the message boards uh go to the website at pantherlair.com panther-lair.com pittsburgh.rivals.com thanks so much uh thanks so much for tuning in today i hope, you, I hope you've had a great week so far we're almost to the end of it it's thursday I'm getting closer and closer to the backyard brawl. Really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll have a mailbag edition of the Morning Pit tomorrow, and that'll be Friday. I'll kick it off, head you, kick you uh, straight into the weekend. So we're looking forward to it. Should be fun. All right, thanks for tuning in. Like and subscribe, and we will catch up with you tomorrow for the Morning Pit right here on YouTube.com/slash